handles really well. Mm -hmm. I found this to be much better, so obviously it's a different car completely, it's not yeah. it's not just like faster, it's just it's totally different. Yep. So my name's Lewis, I've come down from Glasgow today uh, to pick up this nice Cayman S. It's been really good, a lot of really good communication. Uh, Bashir was really good in keeping me updated with what was happening with the car. He gave me the contact details of the man who owned it before. I spoke to him as well, he was very helpful in telling me all about the history. I've come today and it's all documented, uh, all really well communicated. Uh, there's not had any doubts coming to pick this up. Seat belt. So the key to uh, any good uh, indirect fuel injected car, in my opinion, it is, uh, well, I'd say any Porsche, is take the key, put it in, and you normally get like a beautiful countdown of approximately six seconds. So mm. Because I rushed starting it, it's now giving me a countdown of 30 minutes. Right. So we've waited about six seconds. Right. The, the, there is no smoke, nothing whatsoever, as you can see. Yep. It's all clear. I've got it all on camera. You could actually watch the footage on camera. Right. Uh, so that's that. And this being a mid-engine layout, for some reason, uh, it's beyond me how they've been able to design uh, the mid-engine gearboxes to uh, be so you know, fluid and smooth, especially when you're changing gears, in comparison to the Porsche 911. Uh -huh. And the Porsche 911, as a matter of fact, um, the gearbox is actually... Uh, you know the transmission box is actually closer to this setup here yep. than I suppose to the Cayman because right. the Cayman is all the way at the back because uh -huh. the engine is here it, it, you know it, it's, it's, it's a mid-engine layout as opposed yeah. to a rear engine layout yep. so you can imagine that the 911 gearbox is here yeah. engines behind the rear axle right, yeah. the Cayman engine is here gear transmission is at the back but right, yeah. I think what probably makes this uh, perform uh, and the gear changes are so smooth and fluid, you'll see it in a minute, is probably because they may be, uh, they might have over-engineered it. Yeah. Um, yeah, this, I just find this extremely interesting. Yeah, no, I don't know. Secondly, obviously it's, it's a car that I know, I've driven it quite a bit. Uh -huh. Love this now. Fantastic. Test this just to make sure that because I had it parked for maybe about two hours. Yeah. It's very important that when it comes to Porsches, uh, get the tyres warmed up properly, make yeah. sure your the brakes are working. Yeah, it was very pleasant, really helpful. Uh, it was good to meet him on the phone and he sent me plenty of stuff across videos and pictures of the car, which really just made me a bit more confident in coming to buy it. Yeah. But when it comes to really pushing the car around corners, yeah. it does slip a tiny bit. Yeah. So. All right. It's not as if we're going back. Uh, we're going to go out for proper drive. Right. Only downside for me is, is having to come so far. I was six and a half hours driving last night, and it'll be six and a half hours up today as well. The video, uh, we're not going to be posting the whole 10, 15 minutes of it. You never know. You might. <laughs> Yeah. I'm guessing it's like any car, it's not warm quite up yet, so... Oh no, it's warm up. It is warm up, I mean, because I drove it. Let me put this here. Right, go for it. On you, mate. Yeah, so, um, did it, is it warm up quite quickly? I found the BMW, it takes ages. Uh, yeah, th these warm up a lot quicker. Yeah. Are you ready to go, yeah? Yes, mate, we're ready to go. Actually, I just put like that, I think it's important doing all these little checks as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's just to make sure that everything is working. Yeah, I think the last thing you want is to be let down because your mirror's in the wrong place and then you're mm -hmm. thinking about that rather than yep. down. We'll go left. Initially, it will feel like you're here on a test with me or I'm your driving instructor, but yeah. please uh, don't feel that at any moment. Yeah, not good. I think for the first couple of months it'll just be driving back and forth to work but hopefully summertime I'll take it back up and round the, the north coast of Scotland which I did last year in my previous car and I'll definitely do it again so it'll be good to do it in a, a proper sports car. The six speed? Yeah, six speed. Yes mate, it is six uh, speed. 
I drove a 2.7, it was also on the five speed. What I, what I would recommend, uh, maybe the BMWs, uh, you can be in a higher gear at low yeah. speed. Yep. Don't do it with the Porsches. Right, okay, keep uh, it. So I, keep like yeah. okay. I mean, right now you're at 50, leave it, leave it in four. You, you, you're fine, yeah, you, you're fine in four. Obviously the fifth is to achieve optimum speed. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the sixth is to achieve optimum economy. Yeah, uh-huh. Now, some of course, the uh, because the engine temperature is okay, and uh -huh. uh, you know, everything's probably warmed up because I drove it this morning coming to work. Yep, we can have a bit of a go at it. You yep. know, drop it down to third, uh, see how you tackle this corner. same bend in the BMW, you would think, gosh, uh, yeah, it struggles a bit. You know, I'm going to be in the hedge now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you're buying a Porsche as well, isn't it? You know, it's a yeah. completely different kettle of fish. Yeah, well, that, that's, I looked at um, other cars, I looked at like similarly priced like one series, um, and I, I just test drove just the 2.7, then did the one series, yeah. an M140, and I found this to be much better. So, obviously, it's a different car completely, it's not. It's not just like faster, it's just, it's totally different. Yeah, it's a uh, different experience, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Definitely be careful with the speed though, it'd be easy to get a ticket in. Correct, correct. <laughs> and obviously you don't do anything nuts until uh, at some point you start to change the brakes uh -huh. and you uh, put, you know, the Michelin tires we discussed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right now, I mean, it, it, if it was summer, it's, it's okay. I could say, hey, it's fine. It, this is it's winter. Yeah. The roads uh, are a bit damp. It's a bit icy. Yeah. And you, you've only got to hit one, you know, patch of you know dampness or I, you know, icy part of the road, and you, you know you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Especially so, in those tires. Not worth the risk. Yeah. No, definitely. Sorry. Not used to the clutch. Yeah. I was just gonna say that as soon as you switch that off uh -huh. you can see that the because uh, this cooling system is not overworking the engine things do calm down a little bit yeah yeah but one reason you get a bit of vibration is also because of the sports exhaust yeah, yeah. it all picks up pretty nice in the high gears <laughs> it does it does it. but really uh, the, the, the the best thing about these cars is uh, in the lower gear, in the second, third, fourth. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, we've got plenty of space. A pretty narrow turning circle as well, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I mean, it's, 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 uh, I'd say it's got a good, decent turning circle. Yeah. So, so, so the previous owner, the owner before Sebastian and the yeah. one before him, yeah. posted this one day to us. I used to own this car. He didn't see it, the job. Right. Saw it advertised? So, yeah, saw it advertised. Recently found this more useful to you. Ah. We tried contacting him to send him a little gift. Mm. But, uh, but what a nice little note. Yeah, it's good open, yeah. You need more. You need more people like this in the world. I don't. Next exhaust, not bad. Just <laughs> just driving, you know. It's not when you're cruising. It's not just drawing like some do. They've designed a good exhaust. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm glad of the digital speedo as well, just considering it's got like weird increments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming from a BMW, I, I assume you're not used to it, so. Yeah, 25, 50, and all that. So it's okay in Germany when you're not really looking at the speed limit. Yeah. I did the NC500 this year as well. Alright, okay. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, I did it uh, last year. Um, and it was really good. I was really lucky I did the start of the summer. So it was, it was pretty quiet, um, but like a couple of weeks later, it's just camper vans and stuff, you're not really... Correct. Uh, but no, it was good. Went out with a few friends, so. On one of the routes, uh, there was a camper van that went off the road and it got stuck. All right. Uh, it was funny. <laughs> hey, the sign says no campers, but they just go anyway, don't they? The, yeah, the sign does say it, but you know... It's, you get one of these cheeky guys saying, well, it's not a camper van, it's a motorhome. Uh, in my head, I'm thinking, what's the difference? I was thinking, what's the difference? I mean, we spent about an hour and a half with this guy trying to get him out of this ditch. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, most definitely. I'd say it's been a really good experience. Totally transparent. Everything you need to know about the cars, you get told. There's nothing covered up. It's all as it says on the tin, and you come and, it's, you know, just as I expected it to be. So this is your first Porsche? Yeah, yeah, I've never. Yeah, no, I just went from, I had a Vauxhall and I had my BMW and I've come to this, so it's only my third car. Mm -hmm. As I looked at other, yeah. other BMWs and stuff, but I thought, you know what, I may as well go to the next level and get something quite special. Mm -hmm. well, I kind of looked at the budget and stuff. Anything I need to know about turning it off? And... That's okay, you can leave it in there. No, just the same usual process of when you're turning it off. 